Gosh, Campi Flegri is keeping us busy, guys. Check out the list of the earthquakes. So we just had another large earthquake swarm, but then there was another 1.7. But that is not what I want to talk about today. We will talk about a new study that just came out by the INGV, the Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology in Italy. And remember, you know, in the previous bulletin, it said, oh, yeah, the land rise has been cut in half again. So since April, it has been doubling from one centimeter to two centimeters a month. And then they said, oh, last month it was cut in half again. But we've got the new INGV bulletin, the weekly bulletin that's out now also and it looks like it's accelerating again you can see at the end of this chart this spike it seems it's going towards two centimeters a month again so nothing is calm also if you've seen my last video the director of the ingv has said that let's not fool ourselves the volcano is not calm we can't have this illusion right there is risk and just in a few days they will have their first volcanic eruption scenario evacuation rehearsal and in light of that this new study that has been conducted by the ingv and the vesuvius observatory so these are the scientists that are on place that are monitoring campi Flegri and vesuvius they have said the instability is still ongoing the face of instability and you have to understand what that means we had a heavy Brady seismic phase in the 1980s where magma was rising towards the surface but didn't really make it into an eruption so it was basically a magma intrusion the ones that follow me on my channel and have subscribed you know when we're talking about Iceland and the volcanic eruptions there magma intrusion is magma that hasn't made it into an eruption and an eruption is magma made it to the surface did break through the cap rock layer and the surface so that it the magma can come out as lava then as long as it's in the ground it's called magma so in the 80s this intrusion happened and there's this cap rock layer and you see this in this graph that shows what happened in the 1980s that cap rock layer that holds the lid on prevents the magma right so now they have said just a few days ago the scientists have said and that's not related to that study yet right now that cap rock layer and that crust has reached a breaking point has reached or has worn out their elasticity so since the 1980s, we know now that that cap rock layer has lost stability significantly. So it only has one third of the stability left that it had in the 1980s, that stability that kept the magma in the ground. So now it has only one third and they say the elasticity is at a breaking point. That means it cannot expand any further. So from now on, it's starting to crumble. If you take a rubber band, you can stretch it, you can put it together, you can stretch it until it's worn out and it hasn't really a lot of elasticity left. Then for example, it won't hold your hair together that well anymore because it basically, it's just a piece of cloth. The, the rubber, the elasticity is gone. And that's where we are with the crust there. So what happens if I pull out a piece of cloth? It starts tearing into pieces in some areas. And so this is what this study basically says. So that is very interesting, right? Because it basically doubles down on what scientists have said a while ago, that now pressure is rising there's so much pressure on that cap rock layer so this is the latest study of the ing specifically for campi flegre for the flegrean fields that means burning fields and this current brady seismic phase with the land rise and the earthquakes began already in 2005 and it is still ongoing and that is what this study confirms. 
So they call this study space and time distribution of seismic source energy at Campi Flegri in Italy through the last unrest phase from 2005 until now. This study was carried out by Eduardo Del Pezzo and Francesca Bianco, and it was just published. It's brand new in the journal Physics of the Earth and Planetary Interiors. So the INGV study that we're talking about has highlighted that the earthquakes that are happening at Campi Flegre, right, with epicenters underneath Pozzuoli and basically in this area of the Solfatara, that is the most active crater of Campi Flegre right now. But Campi Flegre stretches about 100 kilometers also into the Gulf of Pozzuoli. It's not one like steep volcanic mountain or something like this, like Vesuvius is, right? That's why this is so critical here, guys, because there's more than 3 million people enclosed by Campi Flegri and by Vesuvius. And I want to make a little bit of a jump to Florida right now. Hurricane Milton is something extraordinary. It's really a monster. If you've seen my video about it, you'll understand. Um, check this video out. The mayor of Tampa has said, if you're not leaving, you're going to die. This storm is not survivable. And Tampa, that's more than 3 million people. So similar to Naples, but the road infrastructure and how the subdivisions are built is way more favorable for an evacuation than we have in Naples, because this is a very, very old settled region and narrow streets, winding streets, not like straight and across like it's in most parts of the US. So it's hard with older stone buildings that might collapse in the earthquakes that come before a volcanic eruption. And they basically only have one major highway that is going basically parallel along the coast of Naples. Um, and that is their major part for an evacuation. They have just released their new evacuation plan. The yellow stars, they have different points where people have to go to access that evacuation highway. So they will block off the other roads and basically only make pathways. And that's what they want to rehearse. But look at what's happening in Florida with the highways clogged, with long lines of cars. So it is already difficult and it has been in the past. Cars are running out of gas, then gas stations are running out of gas. So, so many problems that they have there. So how are the chances that a similar amount of people could evacuate? They're saying within 72 hours, but they want to have everyone out of the red zone basically within 48 hours. How are the chances that this is going to work if there's more panic? Because in Florida, yeah, they know the storm is com coming, like making landfall presumably tomorrow, but they knew days ahead of time and they knew they still have time. But with a volcanic eruption, you don't know the exact time when it will come up. So that is why I am very concerned about that beautiful area in Italy. But let's hear what this study says. They are saying that most of the seismic swarms that we're seeing, they, they occur in groups. And that's what we've seen, right? We've seen like some several larger earthquakes and then a few days nothing or two weeks nothing and then the next one. Um, so the author of the study, Eduardo del Pezzo, he's a research associate of the Vesuvius Observatory of the INGV and he's the first author of the study, that's how they call him. And he says, quote, since 2010, we have observed an increase in the number of earthquake swarms. And we even see this this year with the 4.4 in May. That was the largest in over 40 years. So, and then he goes on. Increased number of earthquake swarm and events on the Campi Flegre. And with each swarm and event, with each of them, they're suggesting, or each event is suggesting, an evolution of the seismic activity in the caldera. You know what evolution means, right? It's progressing. 
But he says, however, we have not detected a significant increase in the total seismic moment in terms of the energy being released within each swarm over time. So he's basically saying something a little bit different what other scientists have said, right? We know another member of the Vesuvius Observatory, Roberto Scandone, that has worked there for decades and made so many studies about Campi Flegri. He said in March, if I had the funds, I would evacuate. And that was before we even saw these bigger swarms with the 4.4. So what was the most significant element of this study, of this research? Um, it comes from the analysis of the spatial density of this seismic energy. Now we have Francesca Bianco, who has made a statement about this to try to explain this any further. So she is saying that, quote, in the last 15 months, basically from October 22 to December 23, an expansion of the fracture zones has been detected in the western part of the caldera. But keep in mind, it's gotten worse in 2024. And these fracture zones are at a depth of about 3,000 meters below sea level, three kilometers. And just this year, there have been two studies that have confirmed that the magma is way more shallow than they previously thought. They thought the magma chamber that is causing this is basically at eight kilometers depth, but now they have confirmed it in two studies. It's between four and four and a half kilometers and the last study even said 3,900 meters, so 3.9 kilometers. So now they're saying the fracture zones are at 3,000 meters, so just a little bit above that magma body. And she further talks about that area. She says this zone of increased fracturing coincides with areas characterized by strong contrasts of seismic attenuation suggesting an intense rock deformation activity. So let's look at the 1980s graphic again. The magma is rising up, fluids are rising up, gases are rising up, causing this land rise, the Brady seism. We now have confirmed in the last study the land rise is caused by magma that is coming up and that is worse than just gases and fluids it's magma so if something is stretching like blowing up on a balloon you can only do it as much and now we have the fracturing of these cap rock layers that comes with a deformation of these rocks they are not elastic anymore it's starting to crack and that's why she says this is suggesting an intense rock deformation activity, intense. And then she says the distribution of the spatial density of seismic energy together with the statistical study of the temporal distribution of earthquakes highlight important properties of Brady seism, this land rise, this uplift, confirming that the instability phase of the Campi Flegre is still ongoing. And with instability phase, she means the land rise and the fracturing of the cap rock layer, of this rock, of this surface. And she not only says it's still ongoing, but she also says it's ongoing with a progressive expansion of the fracture zones towards the south and west compared to measurements that they have carried out 22 months earlier from December 2020 to October 2022. So it's the fracturing is expanding because there's so much pressure from a land rise. So and in light of that, I think it is the right thing to do that the authorities are now conducting this evacuation rehearsal because in the months before they've only talked about seismic events, let's upgrade buildings, seismic evacuations. They were really avoiding volcanic eruption, although many scientists told them you have to prepare for the worst case. And it seems now they're doing this. We will have to wait 
for the rehearsal if people are really taking part in this because the last earthquake rehearsal for Pozzoli where they, they're basically sitting on the epicenter, only 30 people took part in it. But the last seismic swarm that just started a few days ago on October 5th, there's another problem. You might have seen my video about this. If not, check it out. The epicenter is right underneath the main evacuation highway. So they said they want to upgrade the highway, the pillars, the bridges, whatever, so that in case of a heavy, heavy earthquake swarm that usually comes before an eruption, this artery, this main highway will not be destroyed or unusable. That's a task. They have to hurry up with this, right? Because you never know. But now the epicenter was right underneath. So that is not good because can this thing hold them? If they lose this evacuation highway, it looks very, very dark. That's my opinion, guys. Check out what's going on with Hurricane Milton coming to Florida. This is something unprecedented. I've made videos about this. I'll put them in the end screen. I'm, I don't know even how to describe this. I'm very, very worried. My heart is broken already and it scares me what is coming towards Florida, what is coming towards Central Florida, the Tampa area, an area that is not experienced with hurricanes like this, an area that just had major flooding from Hurricane Helene. Debris is still all over the place that could be projectiles when these strong winds hit that area. And the way Tampa Bay is geologically located, the storm surge could even push waters into that bay and cause extensive, extensive flooding. The mayor of Tampa was very, very straight. She said, if you don't evacuate, you will die. So check out the video in the end screen about that, guys. This is a horrendous, horrendous disaster that is moving at high speed towards the U.S., towards the state of Florida. So stay safe, be prepared. My heart goes out to everyone that's affected by Helen and lives in the affected and, and evacuation areas right now, guys. Be careful. We're thinking of you. Thank you. Bye-bye.